trading in one market for 10 years, right? When the market moves just a little bit before other side. Okay, skin in the game. This is another book I like, uh, written by the Nassim Talibu. Talibu is a guy who uh, famous for the Black Swan. Uh, he's, he, he was a trader and then he uh, retired and started to run his own uh, book selling business. Basically, when you sell a book, you have a very limited uh, cost, uh, a downside, right? You just need to write a book, spend your time for sure, and then you uh, publish that book, uh, work with your publisher. But those, all those are fixed costs. But the popularity of your book and how much book, how many books you can sell, is unlimited upside. So that's uh, same uh, concept as buying an option. You have limited downside and unlimited upside, and that's what all about. That's all you all about. So, yeah, this is a good book to read. And uh, uh, let's read and see what Talibu said on the randomness of this book. This book, while standalone, is a continuation of the Inserto collection, which is a combination of all practical discussions, philosophical uh, tales, and scientific and analytical com commentary on the problems of randomness, how to live, eat, sleep, argue, uh, fight, befriend, work, have fun, and make decisions under uncertainty. While accessible to a broad group of readers, don't be fooled. The inserto is an essay, not a popularization of works done elsewhere in a boring form. Leaving aside the inserto's technical companion, skin in the game is about the four topics in one, uncertainty and the reliability of knowledge, both practice, uh, practical and scientific. Assuming there is a difference, or in less political, uh, polite words, bullshit detection, Symmetry uh, in human affairs, that is fairness, justice, responsibility, reciprocity, and information sharing in translation, and the rationality in complex systems and in the real world. That these four cannot be disentangled uh, is something that is worse when one has a skin in the game. It's not just that skin in the game is necessary for fairness commercial efficiency and risk management. Skin in the game is necessary to understand the world. First, it's a bullshit detecting identification and the filtering. That is the difference between theory and the practice, cosmetic and true expertise, and academia in the best sense of the word, the real world. To imit a Yugiburism in academia, there is no difference between academia and the real world. In the real world, there is. Second, it's about the distortion of symmetry and the reciprocity of in life. If you have the rewards, you must also get some of the risks, not let others pay the price of your mistakes. If you inflict risk on others and they are harmed, you need to pay some price for it. Just as you should treat others in the way you'd like to be treated, you should like to share the responsibility for events without unfairness and inequity. If you give an opinion or someone follows it, you are morally oblig oblig obliged, <laughs> obligated to be to yourself, exposed to its consequences in case you are giving economic wills. Don't tell me what you're saying. Just tell me what is in your portfolio. Third, the book is about how much information one should uh, practically share with others. What a used car salesman should or shouldn't tell you about the vehicle on which you're about to spend a large segment of your savings. Fourth, it's about rationality, uh, ration, rationality, rationality and the test of time. Rationality in the real world isn't about what makes sense to you, your New York journalists, or some psychologist using naive 
five order models, but something vastly deeper and statistical linked to your own survival. Do not mistake seeing the game as defined here and used in this book for just an incentive problem. Just having a share of the benefits as is commonly understood in finance. No, it's about a symmetry, more like having a share of harm, paying a, pen, a penalty if something goes wrong. The very same idea ties together notions of incentives, used car buying, ethics in the context contract theory, learning real life or versus academia. Kantian impressive imperative muni uh, municipal municipal power risk of silence risk of silence contact between intelligible and reality the accountability of bureaucratics probability prob uh, probabilistic um, social justice option theory uh, upright behavior BS wonders theology as software now I stop for now. <clears throat> the less obvious aspects of skin the game. A more correct though more awkward title of the book would have been the less obvious aspects of skin the game. The hidden asymmetries and their consequences. Oh, I just don't like reading books that inform me of the obvious. I like to be surprised. So as a skin the game style reads Reciprocity, I would not not drive the reader, reader into college lecture type, predictable predictable journey, but rather into the type of the adventure I would like to hide. Oh, <clears throat> okay, I want to stop here for a moment because uh, all, if you read one or all uh, Palibu's book, it's all about randomness, right? And uh, asymmetry outcome, because he was a, a option buy option trader and option if you're buying option is all about the asymmetry payout right that means the downside is limited the upside is very unlimited so here in this book the skin in the game in this book he's also talking about the hidden asymmetries and their consequence in life that means it's a book to reveal the truth in life the hidden asymmetry means so some job or some occupation or some uh, some phenomenon that could be hidden uh, asymmetry down there uh, means there let's say your your doctor or uh, some trader or some uh, uh, or some particular job they have very limited downside but they have a huge upside that's why they choose their um, their job say so if you are a property trader for a big bank right. Your worst case is you will lose your job, right? But the upside is unlimited if you do well in the in the trading market. Same here for the hedge fund manager. You are naturally a uh, buy option for your uh, profession, right? You have limited downside because the worst case is your investment, you investor will withdraw your your funding, and you you your fund will be get this. Uh, Will, will be closed but on the other side you have unlimited upside that if you do really well in some particular year you can get really huge payouts so that's what this book is revealing the hidden asymmetries in life uh, I think he's going through like his old style of books he's going through all the different occupation and different uh, metaphors in, in life and to Demonstrate that the idea is abstract. The idea here is very abstract. See, if you're thinking about the forward uh, asymmetry payout in your life, it's hard enough, right? But he wants to do it in a uh, in an easier way, you know, to give a metaphor and tell you uh, what it's all about. Okay. Accordingly, this book is organized in the following manner. It doesn't take more than about. 60 pages for the reader to get into get the importance, prevalence, and uniqueness of skin in the game. 
that is symmetry in most of its uh, aspects, but never engage in detailed over explanations of why something important is important. One debates a principle by endless justifying it. The Nandao route entails focusing on the second step, the surprising implication those hidden asymmetries that do not immediately come to mind, as well as the less aware some consequences, some of which are quite uncomfortable, and many unexpected helpful. Understanding the works of uh, workings of skin in the game allows us to understand series of puzzles. Hello, you, you. Okay, let's get back to the book. Uh, the Nandao route entails focusing on the second step, the surprising implication, those hidden asymmetries that do not immediately come to mind, as well as the less obvious uh, consequence, some of which are quite uncomfortable and the many unexpect, unexpected helpful. Understanding the working of skin in the game allows us to understand serious puzzles, understanding the fine grained matrix of the reality. For instance, how is it that maximally intolerant minority run the world and impose their taste on us? How does universalism destroy the very people it means to help? How is it that we have more slaves today than we did during Roman times? We shouldn't sur Why shouldn't surgeons look like surgeons? Why did Christian theology keep insisting on human side for Jesus Christ that is necessarily distinct from the divine? How do historians confuse us by reporting on war, not peace? How is it that cheap uh, signaling without anything to risk, fails equally in economics and religious environment. How do candidates for political office with obvious characters, flaws seem uh, more real than bureaucratics with uh, impeccable credentials? Why do we worship Hannibal? How do companies go bust the minute they have professional managers interested in doing good? How is uh, paganism more symm uh, symmetrical across populations? Across populations, where is it? Across populations. Where was it? How should a foreign affair be conducted? Why should you never give money to organize the charities unless they operate in a highly distrib uh, distributed manner? That is called overized in modern lingo. Why do gen gene, gene and language spread differently? Why does the scale of communities matter? A community of fishermen turn into collaborative to adversarial once one more moves the scale. That is the number of people involved or not. Why does behavioral economics have nothing to do with the study of the behavioral of uh, individuals? And the markets have little to do with the biases of participation. How is rationality survival and survival only? What is the uh, foundational logic of risk bearing. But to this author, skin in the game 
is mostly about justice, honor, and the sacrifice, things that are exist, uh, existential for humans. Skin in the game, applied as a rule, reduces the effects of the following divergence that grew with the civilization, those between action and the cheap part. Consequence and the intention, practice and the theory, honor and the reputation, expertise and uh, charlatanism, concrete and abstract, ethical and legal, genuine and cosmetic, merchant and bureaucratic, entrepreneur and the cheap uh, exact executive, strings and display, love and gold digging, Coventry, uh, Coventry and Brussels, Omaha and Washington, D.C., human beings and economies, authors and editors, scholarship and academia, democracy and governance, science and scientism, politics and politicians, love and money, the spirit and letter, cattle and elder, and uh, Barack Obama, quality and advertising, commitment and signaling, and uh, centrally collective and individual. Let's first connect a few dots of the items in the list above with uh, two uh, weakness just to go give the flavor of how the idea transcend the categories. Um, Antien Rat. Antien was a giant, rather a semi giant of sorts, the literal son of Mother Earth's geo, Odin, god of sea. He had a strange occupation which consists of forcing passerby in his country, Libya, to wrestle. His thing was to pin his victim to the ground and crush them. This remarkably no hobby was apparently the expression of filial devotion. Antio uh, aimed at building a temple to his father, Poseidon, 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 he's using Greek name, Greek name, sorry, Greek name, Poseidon, using for raw material the skulls of his victims. Antinous was deemed to be invincible, but there was a trick. He deprived his strength from contact with his mother Earth, physically uh, separated from the contact with Earth. He lost all his power. Hercules, as part of his uh, twelve labors, in one variation of the tale, had for homework to wreck hunted Antinous. He managed to lift him off the ground and terminated him. The crushing him at his feet remained out of contact with his mama. We retain from his first vegetal head just that, just like Antiochus, you cannot separate knowledge from contact with the ground. Actually, you cannot separate anything from contact uh, with the ground, and the contact with the real world is done while skiing in the game, having an exposure to the real world and playing a pride for its consequence, good or bad. The abrasion of your skin guide your learning and the discovery a mechanism of organic signaling for the great cause, passive matter or uh, mass matter guide your learning through pain. Something mothers and the young child know rather well. Uh, I have shown in anti fragile that most of the things that we believe were invented by universities that were actually discovered by tinkering and later legitimizing my by, by, by some type of formalization. The knowledge we get by tinkering via trial and error, experience, experience in the working of time, in other words, contact with the earth, is vastly super, superior to that obtained through reasoning something self serving uh, institutions have been very busy hiding from us. Next, we will apply this to what is miscalled policy making. Libya after Antium, second vision, as I'm writing this line. A few thousand years later, Libya, the putative land of Antinous, now has a slave market as a result of failed attempt at this work called regime change in order to remove a dictator. Yes, in 2017, improvised slave markets in parking lot were captured sub Sabaha 
Africa are sold to the highest bidder. A collection of people classified as a interventionism to name these name name some people operating at the time of writing uh, who promoted the the Iraq invasion of 2003, as well as the removal of the Libyan leader in 2011, are advocating the imposition of additional such regime change on another batch of countries, which include uh, Syria, because it had a dictator. This interventionism and their friends in the U.S. State Department held it to create, train, and support Islam in the Middle Moderate, but who eventually evolved to become part of a. Uh, this book is a little hard for me to read. <laughs> the content is hard. Uh, I'll pick another one. Okay. How about this book? Influence. This is a very uh, one of the best sellers as well. And it's talking about influence is a joy to read. The classic book on persuasion explains the psychology of why people say yes and how to apply this understanding. Hopefully, this is a good book to read. Introduction I can admit it freely now. All my life, I have been past privacy. For as long as I can recall, I have been an easy mark for the pitches of paddles, paddlers, fund readers, and operators of one sort or another. Trust, only some of the, these people have had a dishonorable motive. The others, representative of certain char charitable uh, agencies, for instance, have had a less of intentions. No matter with, uh, with personal disquieting uh, frequencies, I have always found myself in possession unwanted magazine subscriptions or tickets to the sanitation workers ball. Probably this long-standing status as sucker uh, accounts for my uh, my interest in the study of the compliance. Just what are the factors that cause one person to say yes to another person? And which techniques most effectively use these factors to bring about such compliance. I wonder why it is that a request stated in a certain way will be rejected, while a request that asks for the same favor in a slightly different fashion will be successful. So in my role as an experimental social psycho uh, psychologist, I begin to do research into a psychology of compliance. At first, the research took the form of experiments performed, and for the most part in my laboratory and a college student, I wanted to find out which psychological principle influenced the tendency to comply with the request. Right now, uh, psychologists know about quite a bit about these principles, what they are and how they work. I have a characteristic such principles as weapons of influence, and we will report on some of the most important in the upcoming chapters. After a time, though, I began to realize that the experimental work, while necessary, wasn't enough. It didn't allow me to judge, judge the importance of the principles in the world beyond the psychological building and the comforts where I was examining them. Examining them. It became clear that if I was to understand fully the psychology of compliance, I would need to broaden my scope of investigation. I would need to look to the appliance professions, the people who had been using the principles on my on me all my life. They know who what works and what doesn't. The law of survival of the previous assured that their business is to make us comply and their livelihood depend on it. Those who don't know how to get people to say yes soon for a way. Those who do stay and flourish. Of course, the compliance professions, uh, professional ain't the only ones who know about and use this principle to help them get their way. We all employ them and fall victim to them and 
to some degree in our daily interaction with neighbors, friends, lovers, and offspring, but compliance practitioners have much more than the work value and the amorish understanding of what works than the rest of us have. As I thought about it, I know that they represented the richest win of information about the compliance available to me. For nearly three years, then I combined my experimental studies with a decidedly more entertaining program of systematic immersion into the world of compliance professional, sales operators, fundraisers, recruiters, advertisers, and others. The purpose was to observe from the inside the technique and the strategies most commonly and effectively used by a broader range of compliance practitioners. In that program of observation sometimes took the form of interview with uh, uh, practitioners themselves and sometimes with natural enemies. For example, police, uh, bunker squad officers, consumer agencies of certain of the practitioners. Uh, at other times, a involved an intensive examination of the written materials by which compliance techniques are passed down from one generation to another, sales manual and the alike. Most frequently though, it has taken the form of uh, participant observation. Participant observation is a research approach in which the researchers becomes a spy of sorts with disguised in the identity and the intent. The investigator infiltrates the setting of the interest and becomes a full-fledged participant in the group to be studied. So when I wanted to learn about the compliance tactics of an encyclopedia or a Wacom screener or the poultry photographer or dance lesson sales uh, organization, I would answer a newspaper ad with sales trainee and help them teach me their methods. Using similar but not identical approaches, I was able to penetrate advertising public relationship and a fundraising agency to examine, examine their techniques. Much of the evidence presented in this book then comes from my experience posing as a compliance professional or aspiring uh, professional in a large variety of organizations dedicated to getting us to say yes. One aspect of what I learned in this three year period of participant observation was most instru uh, intrusive. Although there are thousands of different tactics that compliance uh, practitioner employ to produce, yes, the majority fall within six basic categories. Each of these categories is governed by a fundamental uh, psychological uh, principle that directs human behavior and, in so doing, gives the tactics their power. Book is organized around these six. Uh, principles one to a chapter. The principles consistently um, reciprocation, social proof, authority, uh, liking, and uh, scarcity are each discussed in terms of in terms of in terms of their function in the society and in terms of how their emotions numerous forces force can be Commission by um, by a compliance professional who deftly incorporates them into requests for purchases, donations, uh, concessions, votes, uh, essence. It's worth to know that I have not included among the six principles the simple rule of material self-interest that people want to get to the most and pay the least to their choices. This omission does not stem from uh, any perception on my part that the desire to maximize the benefits and minimize costs is unimportant in driving our decisions, nor does it come from any evidence I have the compliance professionals ignore the power of this rule. Quite often, in my investigation, I frequently saw 
uh, practitioner use uh, sometimes honestly, sometimes not, the compelling, I can give you a good deal approach. I choose not to treat the material self-interest view separately in this book because I see it as a motivational given at the door without uh, saying. I choose not to treat the material self-interest rule separately in this book because I see it as a motivational given, as it goes without saying factor that deserves acknowledgement and not ex extensive description. Finally, each principle is exam examined as its uh, ability to produce a distinct kind of automatic mindless compliance from people that is willing to say yes without thinking first. The evidence suggests that the ever accelerating pace of informational crush of modern day will make this particular form um, of uh, unthinking compliance more and more prevalent in the future. It will be increasingly important to the society, therefore, to understand the how and the why of automatic or influence. It has been some time since the first edition of influence was published in the <coughs> interim. interim. Some things have, have ch happened that I feel deserve a place in this new edition. First, we now know that more about the influence process than before. The study of persuasion, uh, compliance, and change had <coughs> has other ones, and the pages that follow have been adapted to reflect that program. In addition to an overall update of the material, I have included a few features that were stimulated by the response of, of prior readers. The new feature highlights the experience of individuals who have read influence, recognize how one of the principles work on uh, or for them in a particular instance, and wrote to me describe the event. Their description, which appear in the reader's report at the end of each chapter, illustrate how easily and frequently we can fall victim to the pull of the influence process in our everyday lives. Uh, I want to thank the following individuals. Weapons of Influence I got a phone call one day from a friend who had recently opened an Indian jewelry store in Arizona. She was geeky uh, with a curious piece of news. Something fascinating had just happened, and she saw that. As a psychologist, I might be able to explain it to him, to her. The story involved a certain allotment of turtle-like jewelry she had been having trouble selling. It was a peak of tourist season. The store was unusually full of customers, and the two tourist piece were of good quality for the price she was asking. Yet they have not sold. My friend had attempted a couple of standard sales tricks to get them moving. She tried calling attention to them by shifting their location to a more central display area. No luck. She even told her sales uh, staff to push the item hard and again without success. Finally, the night before leaving on an uh, out-of-town buying trip, so she uh, scribbled, scribbled an atrospherated note to her head saleswoman. Everything in the display case price, uh, price by half. Uh, hoping just to be rid of the offending pieces even if at loss, when she returned a few days. She was not surprised to find that every article had been sold. She was shocked that, though, to discover that because the employee had reading the, had read, had read the half in her first stroll of the message as two, the entire allotment had been sold out at twice the original price. That's when she called me. I saw I know what he had happened, but told her that if I was to explain things properly, she would have to listen to a story of mine. Actually, it isn't my story. It's all about Mother Turkey, and it belongs to a relatively uh, new science of uh, 
this knowledge, the study of animals in their natural setting. Turkey mothers are good mothers, loving, watchful, and uh, protective. They spend much of their time tending, warming, cleaning, and uh, huddling the young beneath them. But there is something all odd about their method. Virtually all of this mothering is triggered by one thing, the chip chip sound of a young turkey chips. Other identifying features of the chips, such as their smell, touch, or appearance, seem to play minor roles in the mothering process. If a chick makes a chick chick noise, his mother will care for it. If not, the mother will ignore or sometimes kill it. The extreme reliance of maternal turkeys upon this one will be what was dramatically illustrated by the animal behavior M.W. Fox in his description of an experimental involving a mother turkey and a stuffed uh, polecat. For mother turkey, a polecat is a natural enemy whose approach is to be greeted with a squawking, pecking, clawing, rage. Uh, indeed, the experiment found that even a stuffed model of polecat, when drawn by a string toward a mother turkey, received an immediate and furious attack. When, however, the same stuffed replica carried inside it a small recorder that played the chick chick sound of a baby turkey, mother not only accepted the oncoming polecat, but gathered it underneath her. When the machine would turn off, the polecat model again drew a vicious attack. How ridiculous a female turkey seem under these circumstances. She will embrace a natural enemy just because it goes chick chick, but she will mistreat or murder one of her own chicks just because it does not. She looks like an automation whose maternal instincts are under the automatic control of that single sound. The Israelis tells us that this sort of thing is far more unique to the turkey. They have begun to identify regular, blindly mechanical patterns of action in a wide variety of species. Called a fixed action pattern, they can involve intricate sequence of behavior such as entire uh, courtship or uh, mating rituals, a fundamental characteristic these patterns is that the behaviors that compose them occur in virtually the same fashion and in the same order every time. It's almost as if the patterns were recorded on tapes within the animal. When the situation calls for courtship, the courtship takes uh, place, and when the situation calls for mothering, the maternal, maternal uh, behavior takes get place. Click and the appropriate tape is activated were and out wrote the standard sequence of behavior. The most interesting thing about all this is the way the tapes are activated. When a male animal acts to defend his territory, for instance, it's the intrusion of another male of the same species that cues the territorial defense tape of rigid uh, vigilance, threat, and if need be, combat behaviors. But there is a quirk in the system. It's not a rival male as a whole that is a trigger. It's some specific feature of him, the trigger feature. Often the trigger feature will be just one tiny aspect of the totality that is approaching intruder. Sometimes a shade of color is a trigger feature. The experiments of ethologists have shown, for instance, that a male robin acting as if a uh, rival robin has uh, entered its territory, the vigorously attack nothing more than a bump of robin red breast uh, feathers placed there. At the same time, I will virtually ignore a perfect stuffed replica of a male robin without red breast feathers. Similar results have been found in another species of bird, the blue throat. Uh, where it appears that the trigger for territorial defense is a specific shade, shade of blue breast feathers. Before we dry too smartly the ease with which lower animals can be tricked by trigger 
features into reaching, reacting in ways uh, wholly inappropriate to the situation, we might realize two things. First, the automatic fixed action patterns of these animals work very well the great majority of the time. For example, because only healthy normal turkey chicks make the peculiar sound of baby turkey, it makes sense for mother turkey to respond maternally to that single chick chick noise. By reacting to just that one stimulus, the average mother turkey will nearly always behave correctly. It takes a trickster like a scientist to make her taste like response seem silly. The second important thing to understand is that we too have our pre-programmed tips, and although they usually work to our advantage, the trigger features that activate them can be used to dope us into playing them at the wrong time. This parallel form of human automatic action is aptly demonstrated in um, experiments by Harvard social psychologist Alan Langer. A well-known principle of human behavior says that when we ask someone to do us a favor, we will be more successful if we provide a reason. People simply like to have reasons for what they do. Langer demonstrated this unsurprising fact by asking a small fact favor of people waiting in line to use library copying machine. Excuse me, I have five pages. My user is Zarek's uh, machine because I was in rush. The effectiveness of this request plus reason was nearly total. 94% of those asked left skip ahead of them in line. Comparing this success rate to the results when uh, she made a request only, excuse me, I have five pages. May I use uh, Zarek's machine? Under these, uh, under those circumstances, only 60% of those ask or compile, comply. I'm in a rush. At first glance, it appears that the crucial difference between the two requests is the additional information provided by the word because I'm in a rush. But a third type of request tried by the lender showed that this was not the case. It seemed like it was not a whole series of words but the first one because that made the difference. Oh, because. Because it's such an important word. I never know. Because. If you say because, it means you're reasoning. When you speak or ask somebody to do something Instead of including a real reason for compliance, lender third type of request use the word because and then uh, adding a nothing new, nearly restated obvious. Oh, excuse me, I have five pages. May I use a Zarek machine because I have to make some copies? The results was once again nearly or 93% agree. Even though no real reason, no new information was added to justify their compliance. Just as the chick chick sound of turkey chick triggered an automatic monitoring response from maternal turkeys, even when they emanated from a stuffed pocket food. Did the word because trigger an automatic compliance response from under subject, even when they were given no subsequent reason to comply? Click grow. Although some of lenders' additional findings show that there are many situations in which human behavior does not work in mechanical tape activated way, what is astonishing is that how often it does. For instance, consider the strange behavior of those jewelry store uh, customers who stood down an um, allotment of circulars by pieces only after the item has been mistakenly offered at a double the original price. I can make no sense of I can make no sense of their behavior unless it's viewed in the click world term. 
the customers, mostly well-to-do vocationers with little knowledge of purchase, were using the standard principle, a stereotype, to guide their buying expensive native school. Thus, the vocation of our, uh, who wanted a good jewelry should purchase a piece, pieces as decidedly more valuable and desirable when nothing about them was enhanced by the price. Price alone had uh, become a trigger feature for the quality and a dramatic increase in price alone had led to a uh, dramatic increase in sales among the quality hungry buyer. It's easy to fault to the tourists for their foolish purchase decisions, but a close look offered a, 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 kind, a kinder review. These were people who had been brought up on the rule. You get what you pay for and who has been the rule burned out in over and over in their life. Before long, they had translated the rule to mean expensive equals good. Expensive because through the stereotype had worked quite well for them in the past. Sorry. Since normally the price for an interim item increases along with its worth. A higher price typically reflects a higher quality. So when they found themselves in the position of wanting good uh, jewelry without much knowledge, of, uh, they understandably replied on the old standing feature of cost to determine the jewelry's uh, rates. Although they probably did not realize it, by reacting solely to the price feature of the they were playing a shotgun version of betting the odds instead of stacking all the odds in their favor, trying painstakingly to master each of the things that indicate the worth of uh, jewelry. They were counting on just one, the one they knew to be usually associated with the quality of an item. They were betting the price alone to tell them all they knew no. This time, because someone missed a half to a two, they uh, bet wrong. But in the long run, over all the past and future situation of their lives, betting those shortcut odds may represent the most rational approach possible. In fact, automatic uh, stereotype the behavior is prevalent in much of the human action because in many cases, it's the most efficient form of behaviors, behaving. In other cases, it's the simply necessary. You and I exist in an extraordinary complicated stimulus environment, easily the most rapidly moving and complex that has ever existed on this planet. To deal with we need shortcuts. We need shortcuts. We cannot We cannot be expected to recognize and analyze all the aspects in each person, events, and situation we encounter in even one day. We haven't the time, energy, and capacity for it. Instead, we must very often use our stereotypes, our rules of thumb, to clarify things according to a few key features and then to respond mindlessly when one or another of these triggers feature is present. Sometimes the behavior that unroll with will not be appropriate for this situation because not even the best stereotypes or trigger features work every time, but we accept their imperfection since there is really no other choice. Without them, we will stand frozen, cataloging, appraising, and calibrating as a time for action set by in a way. And from all indications, we will rely on them to an event even greater extent in the future as a stimuli uh, to rate our lives continue to grow more intricate and variable. We will have to depend increasingly on our shortcuts to handle them all. The renowned British philosopher 
alpha the norms one has recognized this inescapable quality of modern life when she or when he asserted that civilization or once it's by extending the numbers of operations we can perform without thinking about them. Take for example the ones offered to civilization by the discount coupon which allows consumers to assume that they will receive a reduced uh, uh, purchase price by presenting the coupon. The extent to which we have uh, learned to operate mechanical way on that assumption is illustrated um, in the experience of one automatic automobile tire company. Mailed out coupon that because of a printing error offered a no saving to recipients produce just as much customer response as did error-free coupon that offered substantial savings. The obvious but uh, instruct, instructive point here is that we expect discounting discount coupons to do double duty. Not only do we expect them to save us money, we also expect them to save us the time and mental energy required to think about how to do it. In today's world, we need a first advantage to handle pocketable stream, but we need a second advantage to handle something potentially more important, brain stream. It's odd that despite their current widespread use and looming future importance, most of us know very little about our automatic behavior pattern. Perhaps that is that is that is so precisely because of the mechanistic and thinking manner in which they occur. Whenever the reason is widowed that we clearly recognize one of their properties, they make us terribly vulnerable to anyone who does know how they work. To understand fully um, the nature of our uh, vulnerability, another glance at the work of the physiologist is in order. It turns out that these animal behaviorals with their recorded cheap cheeks and their clumps of colored breast features are not the only ones who have discovered how to activate the behavior page of various species. There is a group of organi organi organisms, often termed uh, mimics, uh, that copy the trigger feature of other animals in an attempt to trick these animals into mistakenly playing the right behavior tapes at the wrong time. Mimic will then exploit this altogether inappropriate action for its own benefit. Take, for example, the deadly trick played by the killer female of one genus of firefly on the males of another firefly gen. Understandably, the opponent males scrupulously erupt, avoid contact with the blood thirsty females. But through centuries of experiment, experience, the female hunter has located the weakest in their weakness in their prey. A special blinking courtship code by which members of the victim's species tell one another they are ready to mate. Somehow the female has cracked the Kurdish code by mimicking the flashing mating signals of the, her prey. The murderist is able to feast on the bodies of males whose triggered courtship tapes cause them to fly mechanically into deaths, now loves and this. Insects seem to be the most observed exploiters of the automatic city of their prey. It's not uncommon to find their victim doped into death, but less uncompromising of forms of uh, exploit Patient occurs as well. There is, for instance, a little fish, the saber toothed uh, bunny, that takes advantage of an unusual program of uh, cooperation worked out by members of two other species of fish. The cooperating fish form a mud and jeff team consisting of a large grouper. 
fish on the one hand and a much smaller type of fish on the other. The smaller fish serve as a cleaner to the larger one, which allows the cleaner to approach it and then enter its mouth to pick up fungus and other parasites that have attacked themselves to the big fish teeth and grill and gills. It's a beautiful arrangement. The big grouper has cleaned of harmful pests, and the cleaner fish get an easy dinner. The larger fish normally devour any other small fish foolish enough to come close to it. But when the oh, this is a long chapter. No, oh, this is super long. But when the cleaner approaches, the big fish suddenly stops all movement and floated open mouth and nearly immobile in response to an undoubtedly dance that the cleaner performed. This dance appears to be the trigger feature of the cleaner that activates the dramatic passivity of the big fish. It also provides a, a subtle to blending with the angle, a chance to take advantage of the cleaning with chill or the corporation. The blending will approach large predator, copying the undulations of the cleaner stance and automatically producing the tranquil, unmoving posture of the big fish. Then true to its name, it will quickly trip a mouthful from the large, larger fish's flesh and dart away before a startled victim can recover. There is a strong but sad parallel in the human jungle. The two have a uh, exploiters who mimic a trigger feature for our own brand of automatic responding. Unlike the mostly instinctive response sequence of non-humans, our automatic tests usually develop from psychological principles or stereotypes we have learned to accept. Although they vary in their force, some of these principles possess a tremendous ability to direct human action. We have been subjected to them from such an early point in our lives, and they have moved us about so pervasively since then. And you and I rarely perceive their power. In the eyes of others, though, each such principle is detectable and ready weapon, a weapon of automatic influence. There is a group of people who know very well where the weapons of automatic influence lie and why employ them regularly and expertly to get what they want. They go from social encounter to social encounter requesting others to comply with their wishes. Their frequency of success is deadly. The secret of their effectiveness lies in the way that they structure their requests and the way they arm themselves with one or another of the weapons or influence that exists within the social environment. To do this may take no more than one correctly chosen word that engages a strong uh, psychological principle and sets an automatic behavior tape rolling within us. And trust the human exploiters to learn quickly exactly how to profit from our tendency to respond mechanically according to this principle. Remember, my friend, the jewelry store owner, although she benefited by accident the first time, it did not take her long to begin exploiting the defensive equals good stereotype regularly and intentionally. Now, during the tourist season, she first tried to uh, speed the sale of an item that has been difficult to move by increasing its price substantially. She claimed that this is a marvelous cost effective. When it works on the unsuspecting vocation owner, as it frequently does, it results in an enormous profit margin, and even when it's not initially successful, she can mark the article, reduce from, and sell it at its original price while still taking advantage of the expensive means good reaction to the inflated figure. By no means is my friend original in this last view of the expensive because good rule, the snares of sticking a bargain. Culturist and author Leo Rosten gives the example of drug 
uh, of two back brothers, uh, Sid and Harry, who owned a man's tailor shop in Rosedale's neighborhood while he was growing up in the 1930s. Whenever the salesman Sid had a new customer trying on shoes in front of shop the three-sided mirror, she would admit to a hearing problem, and as they passed, he would repeatedly request. She would repeatedly request that the man speak more loudly to him. Once the customer had found a suit he liked and had asked for the price, Sid would call to his brother, the, the, he pay, the head tailor, at the back of the room, Hurry, how much for this suit? Looking up from his work and greatly exaggerating the suit's true price, Harry would call back, Was that beautiful or wool suit? $42. Pretending not to have heard and cupping his hand to his, um, to his uh, ear, said would ask again. Once more, Harry would reply, $42. At this point, Sid would turn to the customer and report, he said, $22. Many a man would hurry to buy the suit and scramble out of the shop with his uh, expensive equals good bargain before poor Sid discovered the mistake. There are several components shared by most of weapons of automatic influence to be described in this book. We have already discussed two of them, the merely mechanical process by which the power within these weapons can be activated, and the consequent uh, exploitability of this power by anyone who knows how to trigger them. The third component involves the way that the weapon of automatic influence lend their force to those who use them. It's now that the weapon, like a set of heavy clubs, provides a conspiracy's uh, rational to be used by one person to blue gym another into submission. <coughs> the process is much more sophisticated and subtle without proper uh, without with proper execution the exploiter need hardly strain a muscle to get their way. All that is required is to trigger the grid stores of influence that already exist in the situation and direct them toward the intended target. In this sense, the approach is not like unlike that of Japanese martial art called the Jichun Do. A woman employing Jichun Do will employ, utilize her own strength only minimally against an opponent. Instead, she would exploit the power inherent in such naturally present, present principles as gravity, leverage, modern momentum, and inerita. If she knows how and where to engage the action of these principles, she can easily defeat a physically stronger rival. And so is as for the exploiters of the weapons of automatic influence that exist naturally around us. The exploiter can commission the power of this weapon for use against their targets while exerting little personal force. This last feature of the process allows the exploiters an enormous additional benefit, the ability to manipulate without the appearance of manipulation. Even the victims themselves trying to see their compliance as determined by the action of natural forces, rather than by the design of the person who profit from that compliance. An example is in order. There is a principle in human perception, the contrast principle, that affects the way we see the difference. We see the difference between two things that are presented one after another. Who's replying to me? Hit H I I T fit. Are you a fitness uh, coach? <laughs> okay. Between two things that are presented one after another, simply put, if the second item is fairly different from the first, from the first, we will tend to see it as more different 
than it actually is. So if we leave the light object first and then leave the heavy object, we will estimate the second object to be heavier than if we had lifted it without first trying to select one. The contrast principle is well established in the field of uh, psycho, uh, psychophysics and applied to all sorts of perceptions besides weight. If we are talking to a beautiful, beautiful woman at a cocktail party and then drawn by an unattractive one, the second woman will strike us as less attractive than she actually is. In fact, studies done on the contrast principle at Arizona State and Montana State University suggest that we might be less satisfied with the physical attractiveness of our own lovers because of the way the popular media bombard us with examples of unrealistic or attractive models. In one study, college students rated a picture of an average looking number of the opposite sex as the less attractive. They had a first look through the ads in some popular magazine. In another study, male college uh, dormitory residents read the photo of a potential blind date. Those who did so while watching an episode of the Charlie Angels TV series viewed the blind date as a less attractive woman than those who read her by watching a different show. Apparently, it was the uncommon beauty of the angels' uh, female stars that made the blind date seem less attractive. A nice demonstration of, percep of perceptual contrast is sometimes employed in uh, psychophysics laboratories to introduce students to the principal firsthand. Each student takes a turn sitting in front of three pairs of weights, water, one gold, one cold, one at room temperature, one hot. After placing one hand in the cold water and one in the hot water, the student is told to place both in the lukewarm water um, simultaneously. The look for amuse the bewilderment that immediately registers tell the story. Even though both hands are in the same bucket, and the hand that has been in the cold water feels as if it's now in the hot water, while the one that was in the hot water feels as if it is now in cold water. The point is that the same thing in this instance. Instance, room temperature water can be made to seem very different. Can be made to seem very different. Sorry. Made to be very different. Depending on the nature of the event that preceded. Uh, be assured that the nice little weapon of influence provided by the contrast the principle does not go un, does not go unexploited. The great advantage of this principle is not only that it works, but also that it's virtually undetectable. Those who employ it can ca cash in on its influence without any appearance of having structured, uh, structured the situation in their favor. Retail clothiers are a good example. Suppose a man enters a fashionable man's store and says that he wants to buy a three-piece suit and a sweater. If you were the salesperson, which would you show him first to make him likely to spend the most money? Clothing stores instruct their sales personnel to sell the costly item first. Common sense might suggest the reverse. If a man had just spent a lot of money to a suit, he may be reluctant to spend very much more on the purchase of a sweater. But the closer know, um, but the closer know better. They behave in accordance with the water contrast principle, which suggests sell the suit first, because when it comes time to look at the sweater, even expensive ones, their price will not seem as high as in comparison. A man might balk at the idea of spending. $95 for a sweater, but if he has just bought a 495 suit, the 95 sweater does not seem excessive. The same principle applies to a man who wishes to buy the accessories, shirt, shoe, belt, to go along with uh, his new suit. Contrary to the common sense view, the evidence supports the contrast principle prediction 
as cells, uh, motivation, and it's the Whitney Hubbin and Morphe State. The interesting thing is that even when a man enters a clothing store, clothing store with the express uh, purpose of purchasing a suit, people almost always pay more for whatever accessory he buys if he buys them after the suit purchased them as before. It's much more profitable for salespeople to present the expensive item first, not only because we fail to do so, we lose the influence of the contrast principle. To fail to do so will also cause the principal to work actively against them. Presenting an inexpensive product first and following it with an inexpensive one will cause the expensive item to seem even more costly as a result, hardly a desirable consequence for most the sales organization. So just as it is uh, possible to make the same bucket of water appear to be hotter or colder, depending on the temperature of previously presented water, it's possible to make the price of the same item seem higher or lower, depending on the price of a previously presented item. Clever use of per perceptual contrast, contrast is by no means confined to clothing. I came across a technique that engaged the contrast principle while I was investigating undercover the compliance tactics of the real estate company to learn the road. I was a company, a company realty uh, salesman on the weekend of showing houses to prospective home buyer. The salesman, who can, we can call him Phil, was giving me tips to help me through my breaking period. One thing I quickly noticed was that whenever Phil began showing a new set of customer potential buys, he would start with a couple of uh, under undesirable houses. I asked him about it, and he laughed. There were what he called a setup property. The company maintained a rundown house or two on its list at an inflated price. This price, these houses were not intended to be sold to customers, but to be shown to them. So the genuine properties in the company's inventory would benefit from the comparison. Not all the sales staff made use of the setup house, but Phil did. He said he liked to watch his uh, property uh, prospects uh, eye light up. When he showed out a place, he really wanted to sell them uh, after they had seen the rundown house. The house I got them spotted for looks really great after they first look at a couple of dumps. Automobile dealers use the contrast principle. Use the contrast principle by waiting until the price for a new car has been negotiated before suggesting one op option after another that might be added in the wake of the $15,000 deal. Uh, the hundred one or so dollar required for a nice tea, like iPhone radio seems almost trivial in comparison. The same would be true for added expense of accessories like tinted windows, dual side view mirrors, white wall tires, or special trim that salesman might suggest in secret. The trick is to bring out the extras in independently of one another so that each small price would seem, would seem pity when compared to the already determined much larger one. As the water-run car buyer can attest, many a budget size final price figure have ballooned from the addition of all those seemingly little options. While the customers then signed the contract in time, wondering what happened and finding no one to blame but himself, the car dealer stand smiling the knowledge uh, the knowing smile of Jichundo Master. Lastly, there is a letter uh, reader's report from the Paradise Publish Company. Okay, I will not read this letter because it's just a matter of The trick is uh, influence is uh, the marketing help you to know that you need to be you need to be good to 
just small people. This is a good book. I'll continue to read this book uh, for the next several weeks. It's a good first article. Okay, uh, let's take a break again. Is the time now? Okay, it's already lunchtime. So I'm gonna be uh, offline and uh, sorry. And uh, I'll see you later. And if you like this video, if you like the book reading,